Mark chapter 12, Parables of Jesus. Here are some of the story illustrations Jesus gave to the people at that time. A man planted a vineyard and built a wall around it and dug a pit for pressing out the grape juice and built a watchman's tower. Then he leased the farm to tenant farmers and moved to another country. At grape picking time, he sent out one of his men to collect his share of the crop, but the farmers beat up the man and sent him back empty-handed. The owner then sent another of his men who received the same treatment, only worse, for his head was seriously injured. The next man he sent was killed and later others were either beaten or killed until there was only one left, his only son. He finally sent him, thinking they would surely give him their full report and respect. But when the farmers saw him coming, they said, He will own the farm when his father dies. Come on, let's kill him, and then the farm will be ours. So they caught him and murdered him and threw his body out of the vineyard. What do you suppose the owner will do when he hears what happened? He will come and kill them all and lease the vineyard to others. Don't you remember reading this verse in the scriptures? The rock the builders threw away became the cornerstone, the most honored stone in the building. This is the Lord's doing, and it is an amazing thing to see. The Jewish leaders wanted to arrest him then and there for using this illustration, for they knew he was pointing at them. They were the wicked farmers in his story. But they were afraid to touch him for fear of a mob, so they left him and went away. But they sent other religious and political leaders to talk with him and try to trap him into saying something he could be arrested for. Teacher, these spies said, we know you tell the truth no matter what. You aren't influenced by the opinions and desires of men but sincerely teach the ways of God. Now tell us, is it right to pay taxes to Rome or not? Jesus saw their trick and said, Show me a coin and I'll tell you. When they handed it to him, he asked, Whose picture and title is this on the coin? They replied, The emperor's. All right, he said, If it is his, give it to him. But everything that belongs to God must be given to God and they scratched their heads in bafflement at his reply. Then the Sadducees stepped forward, a group of men who say there is no resurrection. Here was their question. Teacher, Moses gave us a law that when a man dies without children, the man's brother should marry his widow and have children in his brother's name. Well, there were seven brothers, and the oldest married and died and left no children. So the second brother married the widow, but soon he died too and left no children. Then the next brother married her and died without children, and so on until all were dead and still there were no children, and at last the woman died too. What we want to know is this, in the resurrection whose wife will she be? For she had been the wife of each of them. Jesus replied, your trouble is that you don't know the scriptures and you don't know the power of God. For when these seven brothers and the woman rise from the dead, they won't be married. They will be like the angels. But now as to whether there will be a resurrection, have you never read the book of Exodus about Moses and the burning bush? God said to Moses, I am the God of Abraham, I am the God of Isaac, and I am the God of Jacob. God was telling Moses that these men, though dead for hundreds of years, were still very much alive, for he would not have said, I am the God of those who don't exist. You have made a serious error. One of the teachers of religion who was standing there listening to the discussion realized that Jesus had answered well, so he asked, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? Jesus replied, the one that says, 
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only God, and you must love him with all your heart and soul, mind, and strength. The second is, you must love others as much as yourself. No other commandments are greater than these. The teacher of religious religion replied, Sir, you have spoken a true word in saying that there is only one God and no other. And I know it is far more important to love him with all my heart and understanding and strength and to love others as myself than to offer all kinds of sacrifices on the altar of the temple. Realizing this man's understanding, Jesus said to you, to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared ask him any more questions. Later, as Jesus was teaching the people in the temple area, he asked them this question. Why do your religious teachers claim that the Messiah must be a descendant of King David? For David himself said, the Holy Scripture was speaking through him when he said it. God said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Since David called him his Lord, how can he be his son? This sort of reasoning delighted the crowd, and they listened to him with great interest. Here are some of the other things he taught them at that time. Beware of the teachers of religion, for they love to wear the robes of the rich and scholarly, and to have everyone bow to them as they walk through the markets. They love to sit in the best seats in the synagogues, and at the places of honor at banquets. But they shamelessly cheat widows out of their homes, and then to cover up the kind of men they really are, they, they pretend to be pious by praying long prayers in public. Because of this, their punishment will be the greater. Then he went over to the collection boxes in the temple and sat and watched as crowds dropped in their money. Some who were rich put in large amounts. Then a poor widow came and dropped in two pennies. He called his disciples to him and remarked, That poor widow has given more than all those rich people put together, for they gave a little of their extra while she gave up her last penny. Mark chapter 13 Jesus tells the signs of the end times. As he was leaving the temple that day, one of his disciples said, Teacher, what beautiful building these are. Look at the decorated stonework on the walls. Jesus replied, Yes, look, for not stone, not one stone will be left upon another except as ruins. And as he sat on the slopes of the Mount of Olives across the valley from Jerusalem, Peter, James, John, and Andrew got along with him and asked him, Just when is all this going to happen to the temple? Will there be warnings ahead of time? So Jesus launched into an extended reply. Don't let anyone mislead you, he said, for many will come declaring themselves to be your Messiah, and will lead you astray. And wars will break out near and far, but this is not the single signal of the end time. For nations and kingdoms will proclaim war against each other, and there will be earthquakes in many lands and famines. These herald only the early stages of the anguish ahead. But when these things begin to happen, watch out. For you will be in great danger. You will be dragged before the courts and beaten in the synagogues and accused before governors and kings of being my followers. This is your opportunity to tell them the good news. <coughs> and the good news must first be made known in every nation before the end time comes. But when you are arrested and stand trial, don't worry about what to say in your defense. Just say what God tells you to. Then you will not be speaking, but the Holy Spirit will. Brothers will betray each other to death. Fathers will betray their own children. 
Children will betray their parents to be killed, and everyone will hate you because you are mine. But all you endure to the end, without renouncing me, shall be saved. When you see the horrible thing standing in the temple, reader, pay attention. Flee, if you can, to the Judean hills. Hurry, if you on your rooftop porch, don't even go back into the house. If you are out in the fields, don't even return for your money or clothes. Woe to pregnant women in those days and to mothers nursing their children. And pray that your flight will not be in winter. For those will be days of horror as have never been seen since the beginning of God's creation, nor will ever be again. And unless the Lord shortens this time of calamity, not a soul on the earth will survive, but for the sake of his chosen ones, he will limit those days. And then if anyone tells you this is the Messiah, or that one is, don't pay any attention, for there will be many false messiahs and false prophets who will do wonderful miracles that would deceive, if possible, even God's own children. Take care, I have warned you. After the tribulation ends, then the sun will grow dim, and the moon will not shine, and the stars will fall. The heavens will con convulse. Then all mankind will see me, the Messiah, coming in the clouds with great glory, and I will send out the angels to gather together my chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest bounds of earth and heaven. <clears throat> now here is a story from a fig tree. When its buds become tender and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that spring has come. And when you see these things happen that I've described, you can be sure that my return is very near, that I am at the door. Yes, these are the events that will signal the end of the age. Heaven and earth shall disappear, but my words stand firm forever. However, no one, not even the angels in heaven, nor I myself, knows the day or hour when these things will happen. Only the Father knows. And since you don't know when it will happen, stay alert, be on watch for my return. My coming can be compared with that of a man who went on a trip to another country. He laid out his employees' work for them to do while he was gone and told the gatekeeper to watch for his return. Keep a sharp lookout, for you do not know when I will come, at evening, at midnight, early dawn, or late daybreak. Don't let me find you sleeping. Watch for my return. This is my message to you and to everyone else.